Alrighty, welcome back to Standard Quiz Review for the Term 3 Standard Quiz in Algebra 1 at Franklin High School. This is Mr. Steele, and in this video I'm going to be going through standard number 9, which tells you to factor completely. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to factor completely. Now, if you've already watched the video for Standard Quiz Question 10, we used one strategy called the factor by grouping method for when you have four terms. Now, in order to attack standard quiz question number nine though you've got to have a whole bunch of factoring techniques available to you because the problem could be one of four types so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of talk about what those four types look like so the first problem type could be simply GCF factoring so you never really know when you start off but GCF could come in any form that's basically where you start in any problem so that's where you're going to use the table and figure out what the GCF is and then you'll have GCF times the I can already tell I've underestimated how much space I need for this. Okay, the second strategy that you might be asked to do could be, um, you could always start with GCF on any of these, but you could also be asked to then do a so-called hard diamond in which case you'll end up actually using split the middle a little bit. So just FYI. could also use the box, same thing. Um, a third method you could be asked to do is a so-called easy diamond. So one where the problem sets up nicely and there's less work for you to actually do. You don't actually have to do the split in the middle. And the last one could be a difference of squares. So again, what I plan to do is I'm going to go through each of these four strategies. I'm just showing you what it kind of looks like, kinds kind of looks like and then um, hopefully that will prepare you and you'll have seen these and kind of had your memory um, kicked back into gear on a lot of these factoring strategies. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through GCF factoring. So you could be asked to GCF factor on pretty much any of these problems. So you may have to do one or more factoring strategies. So I'm going to though start with GCF. So let me make one up here. So I'm thinking about it. Thinking about it. So there's a polynomial that we may need to factor. This could be question number nine on the standard quiz. So what we want to do is we want a GCF factor. And if you watch video 10, uh, you already know that this kind of means we're going to create like a GCF table and see what comes out of each of these guys. And so there we go. So there's our table. We're going to put each of these terms in there. Okay, so just putting one in each. And we're going to try and figure out what each of them has in common. So in the table, we're going to prime factor everything. So for example, 10x to the fourth would be 2 times 5 times x, 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 x. For 15, it'll be 3 times 5, x, x, x. Again, we're just prime breaking it all apart. And then 20 would be 4 times 5, or 2 times 2 times 5 times x times x. Okay, so there we've written everything out. Now to find our GCF, we've got to see what's in common. So what do all of these pieces have? So looking here, um, I've lined it up kind of neatly. So I see that there's a 5 in common. All of them have a 5. So our answer is going to have a 5 as part of our GCF. Um, I see a line of x's right there. So it'll also have an x. And there's another x. So it'll be 5x squared. That represents my GCF. Okay, now, in order to factor it, though, we don't just need GCF. We need GCF times the rest. So for the rest, I'm just going to put all the leftovers in here. And I'm going to keep the lines. So it'll be minus and plus. Okay, so let's see what we have left. So I see 2x and x. So I'm going to have 2x squared left in the first term. I've got 3 and x right here. So minus 3x. And then I've got 2 times 2, which is 4 at the end. And so there we go. We've now GCF factored this expression, and we're good to go. So now ways that you might recognize that you need to do GCF is usually your eyes kind of recognize it as you look at it. As you see that all these numbers have a common factor. So in this case, I saw that we had 10, 15, and 20, and those are all multiples of 5. So I figured we'd probably have to GCF factor. And you can also tell by looking at the x's. So in this case, x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared. There's x's in all these terms, so there's definitely something we can kind of pull out of this problem. 
And so there we go. There is GCF factoring. And again, we might need to use this on any problem before doing it. And this guy could use another factoring strategy, but at least on this one, it does not. So there we go. Okay, so we've got GCF factoring down. So now we've got to tackle a couple of the other strategies. So next I'm going to move on to the hard diamond method. So you'll know it's a hard diamond problem if three things are true. So after you've pulled out a GCF, if what you're looking at, um, well, let's actually write one down. Probably easier if I actually have one to look at. It's the one I came up with. 6x squared plus 11x minus 10. So again, qualities that tell you this is going to be a hard diamond problem, um, at least after you've done the GCF, is that the number in front here is not equal to 1. So it's not equal to positive 1. In this case, it's 6, so it's not 1. And then we've also got three terms. So we also would have three terms. OK, what we're going to do is basically as our goal is we're going to try and break this up a certain way, splitting the middle term apart so that we end up with four terms that we can factor using the split the middle strategy. So in order to do this, there are going to be two steps. The first step is going to be to actually use the diamond. So if you haven't used the diamond for a while, which probably some of you have not, um, we set it up with an x. And so what we're going to do is on top, we're going to put the first number times the last number. And down here, we're going to put the middle number. So in this case, um, what we're going to end up, OK, it's not a little blurry, it looks like, on there. So first times last. Maybe if I move it, it'll autofocus. There we go. It's a little better. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these problems directly out of our polynomial. So the first number times the last number is going to be 6 times negative 10. So there's the first one times the last one, which is negative 60. And then down here, the middle number is just positive 11. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out what two numbers multiply to 60, or negative 60. So what two numbers multiply to negative 60 and add to positive 11. So a lot of these, um, if you're good with number facts and good with factoring number or prime factoring, you might be able to come up with the answer really quickly. Um, in a problem like this, maybe you can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of brainstorm factor pairs of 60 because we need to figure out what those factor pairs are to see if they add or subtract to 11. So over here, so 60, I've got 1 times 60, that's not going to work. 2 times 30, no. 3 times 20, it could be a little slow in the early going. Um, 4 times 15, ooh. I think that might work, because 15 minus 4 is going to give me 11, so I'm thinking that will be our numbers. So it'll be 15 and 4. Um, po yeah, there we go. Positive 15 minus 4 gives me positive 11, and f positive 15 times negative 4 gives me negative 60. So there are my two numbers. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use them to rewrite this polynomial. So instead of 6x squared plus 11x minus 10, I'm going to write it as 6x squared plus 15x. So taking the number out of the diamond, minus 4x, also out of the diamond, minus 10. So there's my new polynomial. And now what I'm going to do with this is, since there are four terms, I'm going to use the split the middle strategy. So that's why we did this, was so we could use split the middle. So breaking it in two pieces. And let's see, we need to pull out a GCF in each case. So GCF here of 6 and 15 is 3. And GCF would be x. Whatever's left, it'll be 2x plus 5. And then over here, my GCF, well, you got to pull out the nearest sign, so it'll be minus and 2. And then that leaves me on the inside a 2x and a plus 5. And again, that plus is kind of hard to see, but negative times a positive will give me my negative from above. And so there we go. There is our expression factored, and now we just need to actually write it out in the correct form as something times something, or stuff times stuff. So the first factor, it's written twice, so it's 2x plus 5. My second factor will be right here and here, so 3x minus 2. And there we go, 2x plus 5 times 3x minus 2. That would be a hard diamond factoring problem done to perfection.